Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Yep, said our friend Bob, a smart guy who thinks a lot, not like most army doctors. Yep, weird stuff is everywhere. It's all around us like a big hug. But when science tries to understand it, it disappears like trying to catch a butterfly. Our brains are like our ancestors who cleared forests. When they got to the edge, they heard scary sounds and saw shiny eyes watching them. I felt like I've gotten close to the unknown a few times in my life, especially once. A young woman interrupted him. Doctor, you really want to tell us a story, huh? Well, go ahead. The doctor nodded. Nah, I don't really want to. It's a bit creepy for me and for you guys. But if you want to hear it, here it goes. In 1863, when I was a young doctor in Orleans, I had trouble finding a place to live. The city was full of old fancy houses, and I wanted a big space with lots of air. So, I found a spot on the first floor of a big building just outside the city, near saint Hubert. It used to be a warehouse and a home for someone who made rugs. But the rug business didn't work out, so the building was falling apart and nobody wanted to live there. I got a good deal on renting half of the first floor, which had four rooms. I used two rooms for sleeping and working, one for my clothes and left one empty. It was a cozy place and I had a nice balcony to walk on, although it was divided in two by a metal fence, but it was easy to climb over. I'd been there about two months when one night in July, I came back and saw a light in the other apartment on the same floor. I thought nobody lived there, so it was a surprise. The light was weird. It made parts of the balcony, the street, and the fields nearby look kind of ghostly. I thought, oh, I guess I have a neighbor now. The thought of having a neighbor wasn't really nice because I liked having the place to myself. When I got to my bedroom, I went onto the balcony quietly, but the light in the other apartment was already gone. So I went back inside and read for a while. Sometimes, I thought I heard light footsteps around, like someone was inside the walls. But after finishing my book, I went to bed and quickly fell asleep. Around midnight, I woke up suddenly feeling like something was next to me. I sat up, lit a candle, and saw a big cat in the middle of the room. It had glowing eyes and its back was a bit curved. It was a beautiful Angora cat with long fluffy fur, and its color was like golden silk. came closer to me, softly rubbing against my legs. I reached out to pet it and it let me. It even jumped onto my lap and purred. I realized it was a young female cat and she seemed to want me to pet her forever. Eventually, I put her down and tried to get her to leave, but she ran and hid. Later, when I blew out the candle, she jumped back onto my bed. I was too tired to do anything, so I fell asleep. The next morning, she was gone. Really, our brains are delicate things and can get confused easily. Let me just recap what I've told you. I saw a light in the empty apartment, then it disappeared. Also, a strange colored cat showed up and disappeared mysteriously. Now, that doesn't sound too weird, does it? But imagine if these things happened every day for a whole week, especially when you're all alone.
starts to bother you and make you wonder what's going on. Our brains always try to find reasons for things that happen, and it's unsettling when we can't figure it out. I'm not scared easily, but I've seen how fear works in others, from kids to crazy people. It grows when things are uncertain, but once you start investigating, it turns into curiosity. So, I decided to find out what was going on. I asked the caretaker, but he didn't know anything about the neighbors. There was an old lady who came by to look after the other apartment, but she wouldn't say anything to the caretaker. But I figured out why the light went out when I came home. The neighbor probably didn't want me peeking, so they turned it off when they heard me. To test this, I had dinner brought to me at lunchtime one day, and that night I stayed in. When it got dark, I went near the window. I saw the balcony lit up from the neighbor's apartment. Quietly, I went onto my balcony and crossed over to the other side. Even though I knew it was risky, I could fall or meet someone, but I wasn't scared. I reached the window without making any noise. It was partly open, and the curtains made me invisible from inside. Inside, I saw a big room with fancy furniture, though it looked a bit old. There was a lamp hanging from the ceiling. At the end of the room, a young woman was lying on a sofa. She looked pretty, with golden hair falling over her shoulders. She was looking at herself in a mirror, fixing her hair and touching her lips, moving gracefully like a cat. Her hair shined as she moved. Watching her, I felt a bit worried especially when she suddenly looked right at me with strange green eyes that glowed. I was sure she couldn't see me because I was in the dark, but still it felt like she could. She cried out and hid her face in the pillows. I opened the window and went into the room, feeling guilty. I apologized and begged for forgiveness. Even though she couldn't see me, I thought I should leave, but I wanted her to at least say something. She didn't respond for a while, but then she slowly turned and smiled a little. She said something I couldn't quite understand. It's you! She exclaimed when she saw me. As she spoke, I looked at her, trying to figure out where I knew her from. Gradually, I found my voice and apologized for being nosy. She didn't seem too bothered and we exchanged a few words. Then, I said goodbye and left through the window, going back to my room. Sitting there in the dark, I couldn't stop thinking about her beautiful face. But at the same time, I felt uneasy. She lived so close, yet she seemed mysterious. She told me her name was Linda, and that's all. I couldn't shake off the memory of her greenish eyes and the way her hair sparkled in the dark. That night, when I lay down to sleep, the cat came back and settled at my feet. I tried to shoo her away, but she kept coming back. Eventually, I gave up and fell asleep with her nearby, but my sleep was troubled, and I had strange dreams. Have you ever had a crazy idea stuck in your head? Even though you know it's silly? That's how I felt after my strange encounter. Nothing new happened, but every evening, Linda would be on her balcony, and we'd talk in the dim light. And as before, the golden cat would come to my bed and stay until morning. Linda confirmed the cat was hers, 
saying she looked like she was made of gold. Despite nothing changing, I started feeling more and more afraid, as if I could see something that wasn't really there. It's obvious, the young lady interrupted. Linda and the cat were the same. Bob smiled. I wouldn't be so sure, he said. But I can't deny that this silly idea bothered me for a long time, especially when I was trying to sleep. There were moments when I thought Linda and the cat were somehow connected, like two versions of the same thing. I kept seeing Linda, but no matter what I tried, I never saw them together. I tried to convince myself it was nothing to be scared of, but deep down I was afraid of something intangible, a fear of my own thoughts, which is the worst kind. I started feeling mentally troubled. After spending evenings talking to Linda and feeling like I was falling in love, I went through days of torment, like someone going crazy. I felt more and more determined to solve this mystery, especially as my feelings for Linda grew. I decided to kill the cat. One evening, before meeting Linda on the balcony, I got some chemicals from my medical cabinet. When I saw Linda, she let me pet her for the first time. Her hair made sparks when I touched it. When I got back to my room, the golden cat was there as usual. I called her over and she rubbed against me, purring. I dipped a glass pencil in glycerin and let her lick it. Then I dipped it in acid. The cat licked it without hesitation. Suddenly, she went stiff and had terrible convulsions, then fell to the floor with a human-like cry. She was dead. I was sweating and shaking as I lay next to the still warm body. The cat's eyes were wide open, giving me chills. Its tongue was black and sticking out, and its body was twisted strangely. I gathered my courage, grabbed the cat by its paws, and left the house. I hurried down the quiet street to the riverbank and threw the cat into the water. I wandered around the city until morning, feeling scared. When the sky started getting light, I finally went back home. I was scared to open the door, afraid I might find the cat alive, like in a scary story by Poe. But my room was empty. I collapsed on my bed, feeling like an animal or a criminal, and finally slept for the first time, feeling completely alone, until evening came. Someone interrupted, breaking the silence. I can guess what happened. Linda disappeared when the cat died. You can see for yourself. Bob said. There's a strange coincidence between the events in this story, since you guessed their connection so accurately. Yes, Linda disappeared. They found her clothes and things in her apartment, even the nightgown she was going to wear that night. But there was nothing to show who she really was. The owner of the house only knew her as Mademoiselle Linda, concert singer. I was called in by the police. They saw me wandering near the river on the night she vanished. Luckily, the judge knew me and believed my story. He closed the case. I can tell you, I was lucky to escape a trial. The room was silent for a while. Then, a man tried to lighten the mood. Come on, doctor, admit it's all made up. You just want to scare these ladies so they won't sleep tonight. Bob nodded stiffly, his face serious and a little pale. 
You can believe what you want, he said.